Hi, Kinesiology 3010. Welcome to our part five of our inferential statistics lectures. Um, this one we're going to go through dependent t tests. Okay, so a independent group t test is what we talked about last week. Um, this is when we're comparing two groups that are independent of each other or they are not related to each other. They're different populations, they're different groups, and we're comparing those different groups because they are different. A yeah, dependent t-test or paired t-test, repeated measure t-test, these are all the same, the same, um, same statistical analysis. Um, these are two paired groups on one dependent variable. So these groups are not separated from each other. They're either well, maybe the same subjects or same participants with a repeated test or repeated measure. So we perform a test, do something, and then so pre-post test within the same group. Um, they're paired based on something that's similar between the groups. Um, something is relating these populations together, and we're seeing how those two groups are different um, in respect to their differences on that dependent variable. So we'll get a little deeper into that. So, for example, we have a question of do males earn a higher average starting salary than females? Okay, so these are the salaries, the averages. A, there's no significant difference between males and females would be our null hypothesis. The question would be, um, is there a difference between males and females within the same job earn different salaries? So within the same job, do they earn different starting salaries? Okay, so now it's a paired study. We've changed it from just saying males versus females to pairing it up based on what job they're in. So the the differences between males and females within the same job. So within a nonprofit sector, within an education sector, within the uh, medical sector, within a scientific sector. Okay, so we're, we're looking at the differences between them within those two groups. So here we're actually comparing the within pairing difference and the average difference within those pairings. Okay. Um, so it's a slightly different way to analyze the differences between groups because now we found those differences, the average difference within the pairs. The average difference within the pairs. Uh, this is why it's a paired t-test or a dependent t-test. These two are dependent on each other because they have something that is alike. Okay, so we have maybe the same individual or the same condition, uh, maybe different time periods, so like repeated measures. We looked at that same examples if we did a pre post test think back to your stretching intervention or your your range of motion lab where you performed foam rolling we would use a paired samples t-test or repeated measures t-test to compare pre and post intervention or pre and post foam rolling on flexibility or range of motion um, so we would look here at what is the difference from pre to post, and then what is the average difference pre to post within um, each individual participant? So participant one had a, a difference of two inches, participant two, one inch, uh, participant three, one inch, and we average those out. The average difference is what we're looking at. And we're looking at the average difference within participants uh, based on that measurement. Okay, so we're looking here for the mean difference or the average difference uh, between paired samples or within those, those individual differences. Um, so repeated measures, I keep saying this, repeated measures is within the same subjects on two separate time periods. Okay, so we're trying to look at the experimental or, or some kind of intervention on what's going to happen to those same participants that we measure give them an intervention, what happens next? Okay, so for, for a visual here, it's pre-measure, manipulation, or intervention. So in this case, think of it as the example of um, range of motion test, foam rolling is the manipulation, range of motion test is the post-test. Okay, so now we're comparing um, this, kind of like what's really different here? Okay, or, or comparing two independent group tests compared to a, a dependent t-test. Okay, so in two independent group tests, we would look at the two groups 
we would look at the average of each group or the mean of each group and look at the difference between those means. So we're looking at the difference between two different groups is an independent group t test. With a repeated measures t test, we're looking at within each participant, what is their difference? And then what is the average difference across the entire group? So we're creating a new column, which is our difference column. So um, one minus two or two minus one, okay, whatever, we're, whichever direction we're going. So post minus pre in this case. So post minus pre is four, post minus pre four, post minus pre four. Now we have our differences and we take the average or the mean difference of that population based on that intervention. So that's the real difference here between the independent test and the uh, repeated measures or dependent t-test is one we're comparing the uh, difference between the means of the groups, uh, the other, the dependent t-test, we're looking at the mean difference within the population after that intervention. Okay. Uh, so here's an example here to uh, study the effect of cigarette smoking on platelet aggregation. Researchers drew blood from samples of 11 individuals before and after they smoked a cigarette and measured the percentage of blood platelet aggregation. Platelets are involved in the formation of blood clots and it's known that smokers suffer from more disorders involving blood clots than non-smokers. So the null hypothesis is there's no significant difference in platelet aggregation before and after smoking a cigarette. We would take our pre and post measures and take the difference between each pre and post measure. This gives us our column of differences. We would take the mean or the average of the differences to find our mean difference for our dependent t-test. Okay, so this repeated measures t-test or dependent t-test, there's no significant difference in, or there's, there is a significant difference in, um, and we follow the same format that we would follow with an independent t-test, finding degrees of freedom, so setting our alpha level, um, and then finding our t-table. The only real difference here is the degrees of freedom. Um, because we're using the same population, the degrees of freedom is the total population minus one. We don't have to, we don't lose a degree of freedom because we have two separate groups. Um, so that's kind of one of the positives of a repeated measures t-test is we're using the same group so we don't lose degrees of freedom, which means we have a greater chance of finding a significant difference. Okay, in order to compute this t-value or the dependent t-test value, we have to find the sum of the differences, the mean difference, uh, the variance, the t, uh, the sum of squared of the difference, sum of squares, and the estimated standard error. So the difference here, if we think about this compared to our independent t-test, we were looking at the difference between the means and comparing that to the hypothesized um, difference between the means or the population means divided by the standard error. In a dependent t-test, we're looking at the mean difference compared to the population divided by the standard error of the differences. Um, so it's a little bit um, similar, but it, it does have some differences when it comes to where we're getting um, our key variables. Okay, so we're making the, the, uh, the decision of does our t-value fall in that rejection region so that we can re reject the, the null hypothesis. So same situation as we would see in a independent t-test, we're just getting our, in, we're making our comparisons in different locations. And we're comparing the difference within each person and then comparing that difference is as our new measurement for our statistical test. So here's another example. Okay, we have our um, pre and post measurements. We have our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis in shorthand here. We're trying to see the difference in pre to post. It, so we would state our hypothesis, there's no significant difference. Our research question and our research hypothesis, there, there is a significant difference. Um, set our alpha level, 0 0.05, and then set our degrees of freedom. Okay, in this case, we had eight participants, eight participants. 
So our degrees of freedom would be eight minus one, which would be seven. So we have seven degrees of freedom. Find our critical T value based on our chart. It's right here at seven. So 2.365 is the critical T value that we have to have a larger T value to say there is a significant difference. So now we'll do the math. Okay, before, after, and our difference. So here, before, before after, we have our differences, our difference column, our square differences, okay, our sum of the difference, our sum of the squared differences, uh, and then we find our mean difference, which is, is the mean or uh, the sum of our differences, which is negative 16 divided by the total participants, which is eight. So that, our, that mean difference is negative two. We're trying to compare this negative two minus the population mean difference, which we assume is zero, divided by the standard error is greater, is that value greater than our critical T value? So here we have our mean difference. We look at the sum of the squares of the difference. One of the positives here with the dependent t-test, you only have to find sum of squares once. You don't have to find two different population sum of squares because we're just looking at the difference. So the sum of square of the difference in this case is 10. Okay, the, the variance of the difference is the sum of squares of the difference divided by the degrees of freedom. So here's our variance of the difference. Now we find the standard error, which is the variance divided by the sample size, square rooted. So our standard error is 0.42. So we're going to plug that into our equation of T, dependent T test, T equals the mean difference minus um, the population difference divided by the standard error of the difference. So in this case, negative two divided by 0 0.42 equals negative 473. Right. We know that that's a zero because we have our population difference. Our null hypothesis is saying there's no difference. So we are saying there's no difference. Um, and in this case, negative 4.73, compare that to our critical T value. It is um, of greater magnitude in the negative. So we can say there is a significant difference okay. um, from pre to post. There are some limitations with this. A repeated measures designed the pre-post has some, some design flaws. Okay, we have memory, okay, so subjects can learn the test and get better at just taking that test, um, especially with, with psychology and, and medicine. If, as more time passes from pre to post, it can influence the differences. Um, and then there could be deceptions, so, so think about those as comparing. Uh, how you interact, differences between how you give the test. We can have some other problems there from pre to post. There's also this order effect. So, so randomly, we have to we have to order these different. Um, so sometimes we have to order them as pre post pre post. Others um, we might have to if we're doing two different interventions. We might have to give the intervention measure, no intervention measure, um, because if everything is the same order, the Performing the first measurement could influence the second. Okay, there could be also practice effects. If you practice that test, you're already going to be better at that test. Um, you've learned how to perform that assessment. You may be better in the second time, not because of the intervention, but because you have improved your skill in that activity. Okay, so here's here's an example of, of what I'm talking about here. So. You're testing the effects of two different weight loss programs, Weight Watchers and Jenny Craig. You've probably seen both of these. Okay, you're going to use a repeated measures design, and you have your participants first perform the Jenny Craig or Jenny Craig protocol for three months, measure them again, and then go through the Weight Watchers protocol for three months and measure them again. What might be wrong with this design? Okay, I'll, I'll give you some time to think about it. Okay, what do we know about weight loss? Okay, perhaps your participants lose a lot of weight on Jenny Craig, um, and then once they go on Weight Watchers, they've already lost weight. So now it's more difficult for them to lose a greater percentage of weight. Um, so we know that it's easier to lose um, the first few pounds rather than um, the next 
few pounds. So it's, it's easier to lose a higher percentage when you start out compared to as you've lost weight already. So what would be our solution here? Okay, we could randomize the order of our participants. So half of our participants do Jenny Craig and then Weight Watchers. The other half perform Weight Watchers and then the Jenny Craig protocol. This is called counterbalancing. So we're, we're, we're making sure that we are controlling for the influence of the order on the effect of the intervention. So we don't want the intervention itself to create a greater difference that's going to um, cloud our values or, or cloud our judgment based on um, just because we ordered them one way, we got this result rather than the intervention was actually what gave us that effect or that result. All right, um, thank you for our part one lecture and I'll, or our part five lecture and I'll, I'll see you next time for our part six.